Good afternoon, everyone. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank Stephen for having us here. And it's a very good opportunity to interact with all the Bangladeshi customers. Um, pretty short presentation today. It's going to be just covering uh, three main aspects. The first point is uh, main steel scrap importers and exporters. Uh, then looking at global steel uh, scrap flows. And then some over, and then the third final thing would just be a pricing trends. Um, the Bureau of International Recycling, which I'm the Vice President of the Ferris Board, collects a lot of data on uh, scrap imports globally and scrap exports. Uh, they do this on a quarterly basis. So these are the figures from January to June 2016. So it was the six month period on which are some of the world's largest importers of Ferris scrap. Uh, no surprises out here on this table. Turkey is uh, on, on top. They've imported about 9 million tons in the first half of this year. Uh, India second. Korea is third, and there's USA, and Taiwan and the others. I think uh, very soon you'll see Bangladesh on this uh, char chart as well. I think it's maybe due to lack of factual numbers not being provided to the BIR that Bangladesh is not there, but I think it should be there as one of the largest importers. Not this year, but definitely next year. On the next slide, you'll see some of uh, the largest steel scrap exporters. Um, again, I don't think there are many surprises out here either. In the period of January to June 2016, uh, the European Union is the largest uh, region of exporters in the world of metal steel scrap, followed by the USA, Japan, Russia, Canada. Uh, the EU exported close to 8.6 million tons in the first half of this year, and the USA has exported close to 6 million tons. So if you just look at these first two countries, I uh, wanted to just share with you all where some of the scrap from the EU and the US are going. On the next slide, you'll see these are the main sort of regions where scrap from the European Union is actually being exported to. Uh, Turkey is obviously the largest center for uh, the European Union scrap. Uh, Five million tons went there the first half of this year. The second one, the second largest importer of EU scrap is India. Then there's Pakistan, uh, the US, and uh, Bangladesh also there. It's showing a figure of about 260,000 tons has been imported by Bangladesh from the European Union only in the first half. So I think there's a pretty substantial amount coming from the EU. Um, on the next slide, we want to see some where the scrap from the US is going. Um, again, Turkey leads the list out here as well, followed by Mexico. Uh, then there's India, Taiwan, Korea, Canada, and China. Um, you'll see a little spurt in China, I think, in the second half of the statistics are collected for the second half of the year. China has bought quite a few deep sea cargoes in the last few weeks. Coming to sort of the last part of what are the pricing trends, uh, you know, this is this is where we are in uh, the year 2016. Uh, I think it just shows uh, quite a bit of a roller coaster. Uh, you started the year pretty low. We hit a low of almost 170, 175 delivered Turkey for HMS prices. Uh, as we went into spring and summer, the prices went down. And then you had a massive correction in the month of June, July, August. At that time, the prices came down quite heavily. And then you were settled in that band of 210 to 220, 225 for quite a few months. Uh, up until very recently, because of, I think, a lot of the panelists uh, have discussed of poking coal as well. That's been the main driver of Ferris scrap prices to sort of shoot up uh, so fast in such a short span of time. And you've already seen Turkey book at uh, 275. Uh, those red lines I've just added there, it's a little bit of crystal ball you know, prediction. Um, the more you talk to sellers in the US, the more you talk to sellers in Europe and Australia, everyone feels that he will probably cross 280 uh, in the next uh, few days. Uh, and then who knows, I mean, it's very difficult to predict what will happen in uh, the next uh, quarter or so. But we definitely see the firmness being there in the market uh, for December and January at least in, in the short term. And one of the reasons Again, I don't want to get into more detail because we discussed a lot of this in the last session. But the main driver is because of coking coal prices. And I found this uh, chart very, very interesting because it compares actually the price difference between uh, Australian coking coal and scrap historically over the last five or six years. And you've always seen a pretty substantial difference between the two, ranging from a high of $260, $270. All the way, if you come to October, it's almost $0 today. So, um, how is this going to change again going forward with poking coal prices changing? Uh, the main reason why scrap has actually gone up is because a lot of the blast furnaces have sort of found that price point now where it doesn't make sense for them to, you know, use as much coking coal. They've actually increased the consumption of scrap in the furnaces and they've all bought scrap. 
I just got some figures this morning where a very large US uh, recycler has sold five cargoes of bulk stuff to China, uh, one to Thailand, one to Vietnam, and all to glass furnaces. So that sort of uh, completely changed the amount of scrap available in the short term. Uh, and that means uh, prices have gone up, and I think that the firmness is going to continue uh, into December, Jan, until the next sort of quarter of open door prices are set. Uh, that sort of concludes the main presentation. Just a quick uh, summary on our company. We're the Thani Group based in India. We're a 65 year old metal recycling company specializing in the trading of raw materials. Mm -hmm. We're also the exclusive commercial representative of Schnitzer Steel USA. We handle all their sales uh, for India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. Um, we've started selling bulk cargoes into the Bangladesh market in the last three or four months. We've sold five cargoes so far, and we've had a very good experience in dealing with all our Bangladesh customers. Um, and just one final thing is to, I'm also the Vice President of the Metal Recycling Association of India. We have our fourth international conference coming up in January 27th and 28th in Jaipur in Rajasthan. Uh, I would encourage a lot of you members of the audience, please come and join that conference as well. We'll be expecting close to 1,000 delegates. We'll have all the world's largest recyclers of ferrous and non-ferrous present. So I would encourage all of you all to please attend and look forward to seeing you in Chapel. Thank you.